The John Muir Trail is a long distance trail which is located in the Sierra Nevada mountain range of California. It's named after the Scottish born American naturalist, author, and early advocate of preservation of wilderness in the United States. Our guests today have hiked the Muir Trail. Stay tuned. Welcome to The Better Part, a program that encompasses a diverse spectrum of topics important to our community, which we hope will both inform and entertain you. We invite you to sit back and enjoy the program. John Muir was a great environmentalist and was the first president of the Sierra Club founded in 1892. In 1914, the Sierra Club appointed a committee to work with the state of California to begin the construction of the trail. John Muir died later that year at the age of 76. The trail was originally named the High Sierra Trail, but was renamed in his honor after his death and is now the John Muir Trail. I'm Val Jeffrey for The Better Part, and I'd like you to meet two sisters who have hiked the John Muir Trail. It took them four weeks and they covered 210 miles. Meet Anne Jackson and Karen Paini. Welcome, ladies. Thank you Thank for you. having us. And well done. Thank, Thank you. you. Why this hike? Well, I'll tell you, when I was young, Karen had um, gone on a backpacking trip and had done a portion of the John Muir Trail. And I vividly remember when she came back from that trip and how excited she was. And in the back of my mind, it was always something I wanted to do, was that John Muir Trail. And so later on, a couple years ago, Karen and I were on a um, Barry Ridge Trail trip. And um, there was a presentation by a, a couple who was uh, celebrating their 60th birthdays, and they went on the John Muir Trail. And Karen and I looked at each other and we <laughs> said, it's time, we're gonna do this. And so we made our decision and set a date and started the trip. So Karen, Perfect. did you ever hike together as children? Um, just on the weekends, um, some short backpacking trips with our mother and that was it. Mo just mostly hiking, not backpacking. So what did your husband say when you said, hey, I wanna go on this hike? They said, go. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. They were enthusiastic about it. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. What did you do first? Uh, first, we got a book and um, started reading about the trail and how other people had broken their trips up. And then we started looking for maps. And that's how we came up with this one um, that shows both distance along with the elevation change. And um, those were the two main criteria for setting up our, our daily hikes. How did you plan the schedule? Well, initially we planned it um, by mileage, um, looking at approximately how many miles we wanted to get, go each day. And then we found this map of the um, elevation changes along the John Muir Trail. And um, then what we started looking at were the passes that we needed to get through and the climbs and the drops that we had each day and putting the two together with the mileage and the passes, we were able to come up with a daily plan for us. Well, we planned our diets pretty um, strictly, looking at day to day, making sure we had calories and protein and looking at the whole bundle each day of how, many, how much we could eat and needed to carry, looking at the weight component of it. And so we broke our um, diet then out into pretty much weekly increments. Um, so we carry a week's worth of food and then our husbands and family would come in and do our resupplies for us on the weekends. Oh. Yes. Whereabouts was it that you received the food? About kind of. Okay, so the first, the first one was at a Red's Meadow mm -hmm. after week one, and then we were at um, Muir Ranch after week two. And then after week three, we were down in this area, um, uh, Kearsarge Pass, but this was such a long section for us, our husbands had to hike our food in and drop it off for us, and then we picked it up at Charlotte Lake. Did you have any emergency plans in place at all? 
Well, our strategy was that we brought large enough maps so that in the event we would have to evacuate for whatever reason, we'd be able to plan accordingly. In addition, we brought a satellite phone with us, and so once a week we would call and check in with the families to let them know, we're, you know, everything's good, we're having a great time, and... Um, what we needed. What we needed. And what we didn't need. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's a long way, 210 miles. So what did you do to get yourself in good physical shape before you went? Um, I do jazzercise three times a week, plus I was doing a hiking group once a week and then hiking on the weekends with my husband. And then as the time got closer, we started loading up the packs and doing more um, high elevation hiking with the packs on. How about you, Ann? Um, I do a lot of weight training, and yeah. in addition to that, I live in Berkeley, which just backs up to Tilden Park. And so I start off, um, I hike regularly, and then as we got closer to the trip, as like Karen said, with the pack and really just building up weight and distance yeah. and working on altitude gains. The packs make a lot of difference. They oh, really yes. do. Yeah. <laughs> yes. We got four weeks to mm -hmm. do in less than half an hour. so. Let's start with week one. Can you show us week one and tell us a little bit about the terrain? Oh, okay. So we started down in this area out of Tenaya Lake and up over Cathedral Pass and um, traveled into Tuolumne, uh, up the Lyle Fork of the Tuolumne River, beautiful valley. It was just gorgeous. And then up over um, Donahue Pass into the Ansel Adams Wilderness, which was just breathtaking. Just with the peaks and the lakes and the wildflowers, um, it was like nothing we'd ever seen before. And these are areas where when you walk by, it's like a walking um, book of Ansel Adams shots because oh, this is where he beautiful. spent a lot of his time. So when you went into like Thousand Lakes um, area, you could just see all these locations where Ansel Adams had taken all these beautiful you know, shots. Um, in addition to that, because of the winter, the extended winter this year, the wildflowers were just incredible. So it was just so much beautiful color everywhere and different varieties of, of wildflowers that you typically wouldn't be able to see in August. So we were very fortunate. Yeah. Yes. So what was the weather like that first week? <laughs> Well, there, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> the first day and the last day of this trip were thunder, lightning, hail, and every kind of weather that you could imagine. Um, from day two on, day three on, in the middle, clear skies. Yeah, Beautiful were. weather, mid-70s, perfect hiking weather every day, not too windy, um, just beautiful. We could see forever when we were up on top. Yeah. Every morning you would just wake up to just blue sapphire blue skies yeah. and um, at night it was just brilliant because again just it was so clear and uh, you could see forever it's gorgeous we we're really so fortunate yeah so how far did you hike that first week what was the distance covered 60 miles was the first week in into red's meadow um it was a tr that was a training week that you know putting those packs on it's a challenge we but called that boot camp. <laughs> <laughs> the first two weeks were boot camp, getting in shape for the last two weeks of uh, <laughs> rigorous climbing. <laughs> yeah. We're talking about the backpacks. Yes. How much did they weigh? They ranged between um, around 32 pounds to a maximum of about 45 pounds because, as Karen said, in that third week, we had to carry nine days' worth of food. So it really weighed us down. Mm -hmm. So um, that was probably the maximum. Yeah. So what are the kind of things that you have in your backpack? Here's some example. We had to put all of our food, which was a challenge, into these bear canisters because they're required throughout the trip. So all your food had to be contained in there, in addition to anything that had any kind of fragrance, like toothpaste or whatever you would carry that had fragrance, had to go into the backpack. And So um, was it, were bears a problem or not? You know, we did not see one bear. Oh, that was a relief. Had, <laughs> <laughs> you can see on Karen's backpack here, we did have the bear bells. <laughs> oh, and um, so then we had our stove. So all our cooking was basically boiling water. So it was, uh, we, we ate um, largely dehydrated food. And so we boil water in the morning for our coffee and oatmeal, and then in the evening for whatever, you know, gourmet. dish that we had, gourmet dish that we had for that evening. Mm -hmm. um, mm. And then um, our hiking sticks, uh, we had purified our water, 
and um, and your boots boot camp you said there's the boots. boots and then we have we both carried these crocs and they were great for water crossing so oh. when we ever to go across streams or rivers we would just put our our take our boots off and put the crocs on yeah and um, Karen has her water purifier, that blue stick there, and then our yes. water bottles that we okay. carried. Yeah. So how far did you walk on average every day? About 10 miles. That's what we aimed for, yes. Yeah. Some days we made it, some days we didn't. Some days we went a little farther. Yeah. But yeah. that, yeah, we had it mapped out pretty tightly, and I think we made just about Except for a couple of nights, we made every target that we had originally planned. Yeah. So, so tell us about week two. Show it to us. You said the weather was good, lovely. right? Yeah, it was absolutely lovely. And yeah. uh, so tell us about the terrain and what it was like that next week. Well, the next week was interesting because it really had no idea of where, where we were in the whole scheme of things. So you'd get up on top of these ridges and um, we went from, from over here, from Red's Meadow again, all the way over here to Florence Lake. And we just, it was a mystery. It was like around every corner, you just had no idea where you were. But we were going, as you can see, we're crossing every little water or drainage of the Sierra. Mm. So it's constantly up and down and yeah. up and down. So and when was, we first what, came out of Red's Meadow, it was, um, different in that that whole area had been impacted by a fire um, about 20 years ago. Yeah. And so to go from this beautifully forested area into this kind of fire impacted area yeah. that's in recovery was different. And uh, it was, the prior week was so beautiful around every bend was something just incredible and breathtaking. And now to go into this kind of fire ravaged area was a little bit you know, different and not quite <laughs> as inspiring as the, the prior week. But as we moved on, then you started having these aha moments of just beautiful areas again. And so um, every day was just something incredibly different and um, more and more beautiful, whether it was really um, rocky um, shale areas to beautiful meadow areas that are heavily, f that become heavily, more heavily forested. Mm -hmm to um, streams that were just um, rich with trout. That, it was, that was the most incredible thing, was just to see the lineup of trout everywhere, because the water was just incredibly clear. And there were golden rainbow trout and brown trout just everywhere. And that was just pretty fabulous. In addition, I think we, it was that week we saw a lot of, um, we start, started to see um, the yellow-legged frogs. And so that was kind of interesting in these lakes that the whole surrounding areas were just thick with these frogs, which you typically don't see a lot of anymore, and so that was pretty interesting. And mm -hmm. When you crossed the water, was it nice and smooth, or were there lots of boulders and rocks, or any, any waterfalls? Or Oh, we crossed at the base of waterfalls, and it was never smooth, it was always rocky. Always rocky, and it was always rushing. Right. So well, this year was particularly <laughs> yeah. because of the, the late, the heavy and late winter. Okay, show me week three. What did you do week three? Week three, we started out of Muir Ranch, and then we headed up over into over Muir Pass. We did four passes this week. So we did uh, Muir Pass, Mather Pass, Pincho Pass, and then down over here to Glen Pass and um, pulled out at, at Charlotte Lake. So that was a rough week. <laughs> <laughs> Week four is the last week. You must have been getting pretty tired. So show us week four. Week four, we just had a couple of big items. That was Forester Pass, which was over 13,000 feet that we had to get over. And then over to Mount Whitney, and then Trail, um, Trail Crest Pass, and out to Whitney Portal. Did you rest at all during the day, or did you just keep going? We hiked pretty much all day long. We had our stops. Um, we tried to take an eating break and a little bit rest at the most every two hours. Um, but we pretty much hiked from when we got up until about 5.30, 6 o'clock wow. in the evenings. Yeah. And were the trail signs well marked? I mean, you didn't go wrong anywhere. They were really well signposted? Yes, they're very well, very well posted. Yeah. yeah. Did you always stick to the plan route? We did. We did. We um, there were times when we were hiking, we were a little bit apprehensive about what the weather conditions were going to be or the trail conditions. So um, we made plans in the event we needed to change, but we pretty much stayed to our, our plan.
planned route. And was there just you guys on the trail or did you meet many people along the trail? We met, you know, we passed a lot of people, but the final two weeks we actually started um, hiking along with other groups where we would pass each other during the day. So at, at least two other groups. Um, one group was a group of men from Vermont who we just played leapfrog for the last two weeks pretty much. And then a group of college kids. Yeah. yeah. So, it, you know, that was fun having somebody along. You know, you knew you could, if something happened, you had somebody close that you could get to. Yeah. How often did you eat? And what did you eat? Well, we ate pretty much every two hours. So in the morning, we would start off and we'd have, um, we call them our cafe au lait, which were like instant coffee and dried milk. And then we'd have some oatmeal. And every, every two hours, we would take a, a snack break to keep hydrated and just keep our calorie intake up. We'd stop for lunch. Um, and then in the evenings, we'd have our, our dinner. So it was pretty much eating every two hours throughout the day just to keep us going. Right. Were you, did you eat the same food? Did you get sick of the food or how did that work? Well, we had 27 days of oatmeal. So after, after day two or three, that pretty much settled in. The oatmeal thing was okay. The dinners, Ann and I talked about it. We had more of a variety of dinners on this trip than we would have had at home, so. Yeah, it wasn't bad. It wasn't bad. <laughs> the lunches were, uh, not so hot. I mean, we had some good ones, and then we had some that didn't work out so well, so. Yeah. It was a challenge for everybody on their lunches. We'd always talk, get on top of the pass and look at what everybody had for lunches. Everybody would be comparing what they brought just to get ideas, but it was pretty much the same fare for everybody. <laughs> you could have swapped lunches. <laughs> exactly, with exactly. Yeah. Did you eat a lot of hummus? I ate a lot of hummus. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Brought a lot of hummus home also. Yeah, that, <laughs> that turned out to be something that was lightweight, easy to, easy to cook up and uh, serve. But yeah, it got old really quick. Yeah. <laughs> And presumably, you slept in a tent, so mm -hmm. the skies must have been absolutely awesome. Yes, they were just, they were just like indescribable. It was just so beautiful at night. And for um, the majority of our trip, we had a moon out, and so it was just bright and, and just incredibly gorgeous at nighttime. Yes. And week four, you were saying that you were pretty tired by the end of four. But the adrenaline must have still been going and there's always that part at the beginning when it seems to take a long time and you'd never think it's going to be over but then you're faced with week four and you're getting near the end how did you feel you know we were just talking about that that it um we, there were still the challenges that we had to get over week four so it wasn't like the end was real close um even going in that last day when we went up Mount Whitney, um, or attempted to get up Mount Whitney, at that time we didn't know that that was our last day. And in some ways that was good because it just kept everything at a calm level, you know, and, um, but, you know, it was, it was a good week. We didn't hike, the mileage wasn't as high. We just had the elevation changes that week. So do you do, when the elevation changes, you don't go quite so far? No, it just it was the way it worked out um, with the food drops, with that the going having that long third week um, because of the food drops. The fourth week um, mileage ended up being shorter, mm. so we just could play a little bit more. You know, we yeah. we took long lunches, yeah. sat in the sun, read that kind of thing, enjoyed the scenery around yeah. us. And we actually spent a lot of time just talking with the folks that we were backpacking along with. So it was nice to kind of catch up and, and share stories about the trip. Mm. So it was kind of a neat time. Yeah. But our last, um, we actually at the end were planning that we would have two more days. And um, when we, were, we got up the morning of Whitney, um, the weather had changed. And so because of that, we had to uh, make what was originally planned for a two-day segment a one-day segment of going, doing the ascent up, and then actually hiking completely out that day. And how far were you from the end at that point? Fifteen miles. Fifteen yeah. miles. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Now Mount Whitney is actually at the end of the trail. Did you have to climb to the top of the trail? We tried. Again, Anne mentioned that we had the cloud cover when we woke up um, yeah. that morning. So we had talked to a ranger, and we knew that the conditions might be iffy. 
Um, cloud cover in the southern Sierras in August is not good. Um, there's most likely you're going to ha have the thunderstorms in the afternoon. So we got up, we dropped our packs where everybody drops their packs, and we headed over towards the peak. And about three, well, not we weren't even over maybe 10, 15 minutes. Then you, we heard the thunder, and we got hit with some hail. I was like, okay. And so then we continued. But then we met the same ranger coming back, and he said, you need to get down. And so we made it about three quarters of the way over towards the peak from the trail junction. We were about so, a quarter mile away. So we'd yeah. done like a 3,000 foot ascent up. Is that right? Yeah. About 3,000 feet up. And it was, we could see it. You know, you could practically touch it. But the weather had just changed so much. And we knew we had so far to still come down that was so exposed that we needed to do the smart thing there. Yeah, and so, it's definitely the smart thing. But yeah. were you disappointed that you didn't make it? No. Not really. No. no, it really wasn't the point of our trip. I mean, the whole trip was really that whole four weeks and just everything we experienced during that four weeks. It certainly wasn't the ascent of uh, Whitney. That was uh, what we're yeah. looking forward to now. No. Yeah. Can you just show us on the map that last leg? So we spent the night probably, oh boy, right in here. Oh, here's the trail junction up over into Mount Whitney right up here. So, and then the back side is the, you, it's not on this map, it drops down the other side. So, yeah, there's eight and a half miles from this point right here down to the bottom. So, it was quite a hike that day. This is, this is a long piece of paper, let alone yeah. a long trail. <laughs> yes, what elevations did you reach from one to the other, one extreme to the other? Well, I think our lowest points were about 7,500 feet and those were down where we were doing the, the food pickups with our husbands. And then the highest, we reached probably about 14,000 feet with Mount Whitney. Um, Forrester Pass was at 13,003. We had, you know, there's several 12,000 foot passes. Those think, were breathtakers. Yeah, over the whole trip, I think it's 43,000 feet of ascent. So that's how much you climb yeah. over the whole trip. Mm -hmm. Was altitude sickness a physical challenge that you faced? No. Fortunately uh, for us, no. No, because we started in Yosemite. This, if you're going to, if altitude is an issue for you, they had recommended that you start in Yosemite and build up your altitude um, acceptance until you get down to the southern part where the, the higher elevations are. So, I mean, we started at around seven, 8,000 feet there, but we were taking it slow and the packs were a little lighter. And uh, yeah, the only time we had an issue was coming over the night after Forrester Pass, mm -hmm. because I think we had too much of a net gain during that day and we didn't drop it back down. And so when we woke up the following morning, we were feeling a little rummy. Mm -hmm. and, and so it took us a few hours and a couple cups of coffee <laughs> to get clear headed enough and then we, you know, headed out again. Was that your most significant challenge, at, do you think, Anne? Um, I think for me the most significant day was when we went over um, Muir Pass and that was our first pass where we had a lot of snow um, both going up and um, coming down and so much snow it was difficult to find the path and find where you needed to go up on the ascent and it was tricky um, and then coming down again it was tricky because of the snow and actually finding the trail way down and it was very steep and slick so physically challenging and um, but it was gorgeous, you know, yeah. a real, real feeling of uh, success when we actually got through it that day. <laughs> it was a long hike. So did did either one of you ever want to give up and go home? No, no, that wasn't an option. No, I think in the evening, <laughs> yeah, you would feel a little bit overwhelmed, but in the morning you were refreshed and ready to go again. It's pretty exciting. Yeah, Karen, what was the highlight for you? The highlight mm -hmm. for me was. Um, being out for four weeks in this beautiful country. The, the scenery, the mountains, the flowers, um, it was just living the book. It, you know, you see these pictures and here it's hard to believe that you're out, actually you can touch it. And it was just amazing, just amazing. How about you, Anne? Um, the highlight for me, I think, was spending you know, the four weeks having this experience with my sister. Um, who, you know, we haven't had an opportunity to do something like this since we were in our 20s. And it was just great having this time together. Mm -hmm. And um, 
then when we came down, uh, Whitney, even with the weather being as extreme as it was, when we were coming down towards the portal, Karen said, Ann, look. And as we looked out down towards the portal, there was a double rainbow oh. from one end to the other. And it was just a fabulous way to end the trip. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Absolutely beautiful. Is there any kind of message that you want to give to people thinking about making this hike? It's doable. I, I think, you know, with proper training and planning, um, you don't have to do it all in one fell swoop. You can do sections of it. it, it you can do it. You can do it. But it, it does take a lot of work. Just need to be physically fit and have the determination to do it. That's it. And take a good companion with you. That's it. Finding, <laughs> that, finding that perfect companion. Yeah. Yeah. Well, two sisters, and you seem to get on very, very well together. Yeah. So it bonded. Absolutely. Yeah. Do you have any other plans for another hike? Yeah. Oh, yeah. We're already planning our next trip. So we're looking to go um, from Tahoe to Yosemite next year. So I think it's a two-week trip. Not quite as long. Maybe longer. <laughs> <laughs> longer per week. Yeah. And we're going to have to hit a little bit more mileage per day. But that's okay. Well, I admire you both for what you did. It was a wonderful challenge, and you did it. Yes. And your husbands were part of it, dropping off the food to you. Absolutely. So it was a family affair. It's a great family affair. So yes. when you come back from your other hike, come and tell us all about oh. that, okay? Absolutely. Yes, all right. Will. Thanks so much for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks for having us. If you are planning to hike the John Muir Trail, you will need a pass. Information can be found on the National Park Service website at www.nps.gov. Happy hiking, stay safe, and thanks for watching.